being a quadriplegic, there's a lot more to it than just not being able to walk. Think about crunching down into your abs. Good. There's also the loss of uh, more intimate functions such as sexual function, bowel bladder function, and also very vital functions such as body temperature regulation. So you're basically relying on somebody else to be your able body and that can be humiliating. Psychologically, this is absolutely devastating. It, it takes a toll. It's draining and especially when you, know, you grow up being an athlete and competitive and, and whatnot. You've lost the things that you've loved. It would mean the world to get those things back. And that's where we're going with this research now. You can get these things back. I think early on the outpour of support was tremendous and it, it changed my life substantially. It's one of those things where you're obviously very grateful and you want to give back. He's on a mission. I mean, he always said, I'm going to get up and skate, I'm going to get up and walk again. And he doesn't mean that for just himself, he means that for everybody. What has inspired me is that through this injury that he suffered, he did not just take the back seat, that he's taking this as an opportunity to help the millions of others who have spinal cord injury. The foundation was started on my one year anniversary after my injury. It was to fund the innovative therapies and as we dug in and realized there was you know, much more to recovery than just therapy, you know, here comes epidural stimulation. Our question is, can we regain volitional movement back? Now what volitional means is if you think about moving your leg, can we get the leg to move again? Up. And this involves a surgery where an electrode gets implanted just above the dura, and that's why it's called epidural stimulation, above the dura, that is the covering of the spinal cord. The spinal cord already knows how to respond to that sensory information, but it can't quite hear it. By amplifying the signals, then the spinal cord can interpret that sensory information. What they didn't expect that does happen now is you get back the functions you lost. And if you ask anyone that's been paralyzed, they'll say they'll take that back any day. So that's bowel, bladder, sexual function, body temperature regulation. It's one of those things that epidural stimulation has, has given people you know, with spinal cord injuries hope and, and progress within their lives. The early work that was done in University of Louisville was performed on four patients, and the results were promising. But what was really critical is, can another team replicate that, and perhaps even go beyond that? So last year, our foundation announced that we were going to partner with the Mayo Clinic and support the research that they're doing in epidural stimulation. Our ultimate goal is to translate this to clinical practice. What we're doing is supporting the first two patients at the Mayo Clinic who are getting this implant. And the first one was implanted in August. What I can say is the initial results are quite encouraging. We're ecstatic on the progress that has been made so far and cannot wait till, you know, the next patient is implanted. Within the spinal cord injury population, there's frustration at the, the speed at which this therapy is translating to widespread use in the clinic. Really how rapidly we proceed and can get this to the patient depends on how much money we have. The hockey community has been absolutely amazing. With the Jablonski family in support of the Believe in Miracles Foundation, have raised funding so that the critical piece of this project was met. We've made substantial progress in, in raising awareness and raising money for spinal cord injury research and, and what we're doing with the Mayo Clinic right now. As great as it's been, and I can't thank everyone enough for the support and what we've done as a foundation to raise money, uh, it's a very time-sensitive matter. We're making giant leaps forward with the Believe in Miracles Foundation. We're very confident that we can have a huge impact on a lot of patients. This really is Believe in Miracles type of project. And my hope is that people will come together and support that and change the lives of you know, millions of people. With the resources we have as a foundation and the support that we have, you know, the, the sky is the limit.